Good evening, everybody. Welcome back with me, Martini Chang. And today, I'm a, the director of Education Overseas Services here with Katarina Hilda also from Toronto. And now we have a very special guest from CNC, which is College of New Caledonia in Prince George, British Columbia. Okay, let's call him with Angelo or Jello. He is the representative of CNC. Okay, he will let us know more about CNC, a very affordable campus, public campus for exactly in Canada. And it has a lot of um, interesting programs for sure, from hospitality, IT, accounting, uh, business, and then also health, yeah, I guess. Mm. And there are also top programs from CNC, okay. Um, so right now I will leave it for Jello. Just do your All right. best presentation for the viewers right now. Do my magic, no problem. Thank you for- uh, Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good time Thank you. All right, okay, Thank you, Martini. Yeah, mm. before that, sorry, before that, um, I will tell the, uh, mm. the friends mm. here if they want to ask later, we will have Q&A session. And okay. after, after, yeah, after Jello finish with uh, the explanation about CNC and later okay. you can, you can just um, mm. raise your hand or you can just drop uh, any questions in the chat box and I will read your questions or you can just, and uh, you can just ask Jello questions. Anything, yeah. If I'm single anything. or what, it's okay, ask me anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he, he doesn't mind that. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Thank yeah. you. By the way, I, I think I need access to the uh, screen sharing. If you can please okay. assist me with that one. Okay, so, just wait a second. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, All right. Make him as co host or pass. Yeah. Yep. Can you try it? Oh. All right, working now. Thank you. Okay, let me just quickly share my screen. I am distracted with this profile picture on, oh, shoot. Well, oh, God, you are seeing my personal account. <laughs> no, no, it's just the... Oh, PowerPoint. Good, PowerPoint, good for me. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Because I, I saw this profile picture with a cat. That's so cute, but <laughs> got, got me distracted for a second. So, all right, anyway, good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me, and uh, I'm just happy to be working with the Indonesian market. Martini, thank you for guesting me. I'm hoping this is not the first, not even the last. Hopefully, we can have 50 more presentations for 2022 yes, yes. up to 2030, whatever, how many years, right? So... Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> great, I would love great. to. Okay, okay, that's, then. That's nice. All right. Anyway, let, let me go direct to the presentation. Again, my name is Angelo, and I am uh, basically the country representative for College of New Caledonia. I know some of you may not be familiar, like who is College of New Caledonia or CNC, and where the hell is Prince George? Excuse my English, but where is Prince George for real? So I'll, I'll uh, get to that in a while. So hopefully um, uh, I can convince you to study at our institution, right? Wait, give me a second. Let me check if I got the sound correctly. All right, it's shared sound. Good. Going back. All right. So um, I'll try to get direct to the point so that if you have questions later on, you can just drop them in in our, in our uh, message box or uh, raise a question. Just write down. We'll go to that part later. So CNC basically is the perfect school for applicants who are budget conscious and looking for high earning destinations. As far as I understand the Indonesian market, there's really a combination of depending on what you want to achieve when you go to Canada. Um, but CNC, I'd add to that, it's the perfect destination for migration-driven applicants. Um, we all know studying abroad, is it's an investment. It's like you're starting a business. Uh, but when you study abroad, you get more benefits after the program. Not only that you earn a degree, but you also get an opportunity to expand your horizon, get work, and eventually find migration opportunities. That's the good thing about Canada. And of course... Best thing for Indonesians, um, CNC is the best school 
if you want to earn two diplomas in one. So pathway to renowned and high ranking universities. So that's very much perfect to increase your academic level and your saleability in terms of finding jobs in the future, whether it's in Canada or even in Indonesia in your home country. So in a nutshell, CNC is the best school to jumpstart your journey to Canada. We are empowering. We are the stepping stone and a leg up to something greater. We offer an essential foundation of skills and knowledge, always striving to be relevant in a changing workforce. We welcome and shape learners of all kinds. Access and support come naturally. We are connective. We are the bridge, the branches that extend between graduates and employers. We intersect ideas and action, bringing practical application to the concepts we teach. We are grounded. We remain deeply rooted in our region. We build relationships on a one-to-one -one basis and take community needs to heart. We listen to those around us and respond in a proactive way. Our sense of place gives us perspective. We are dynamic. We shift and evolve as the world changes around us. We adapt our modes of delivery, introducing new ways to learn and connect. We are a force for change providing direction and impact from the individual to the community and beyond. We are CNC. We are CNC and we are the best school to jumpstart your journey to Canada. So these are just some of the pictures of our Southeast Asian students. Some are Filipinos, a few Vietnamese. So hopefully we can send more Indonesians into Canada at the same time. Our school, again, is located in Prince George, and I'm sure you are wondering, what Prince George? Um, is there a Prince George, play, Prince George place in Canada? Um, for most people, they only know about Vancouver, Ontario, or even Toronto. So here's the thing. You're missing a lot in your life. You know, opportunities, there are, there's more to those cities than uh, what you know. So Prince George... It's actually the capital of North British Columbia. Here is a map of BC, all right? So, uh, well, this comparison is based on Manila, but let's just put it this way. If Vancouver is the main city, maybe let's say Jakarta, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of a best comparison of a, of a second class city in Indonesia that can be compared. But uh, to keep it simple, Prince George is found at the heart of British Columbia, wherein it is a passers-by or economic, um, economic roadmap for the country. So it is the third most invested city in Canada or in British Columbia right now. So if Vancouver is the major city, eventually the opportunities will overflow. So other opportunities will go to Prince George. So although it is not as known as Vancouver, a lot of the companies have been building establishments in PG. Mind you, last year, um, Hyatt Hotel and Marriott Hotel, they just built an establishment even during the pandemic. So you can see the potential of the place, not only of the location, but also the, the economic growth that uh, British Columbia is really investing in the province. So weather in Prince George is just perfect. For some Southeast Asian people, we think of uh, Canada as very cold. It's hard to adjust. But mind you, in Prince George, the weather is just perfect. It's much easier for us to adjust to the climate. Um, uh, I would say it's, uh, it's sunny cool, 1,900 hours of sunshine every year. So it's less rain compared to other cities. So that's why uh, people here... That's why I say it's always the best place to jumpstart everything, not only your career, your journey, but also adjustment to a new culture. Things to do, um, I always say it's province, but maybe not what we think most of like what a province is. A province in Canada, it still has lots of the amenities of an urban city, right? So it's still outdoors and nature, indoors and sports, bars and nightlife. So you won't get bored like you see only mountains, forests. So it's the perfect balance between urban and nature in one. Now, are there 
local residents right now in Prince George. There is a fast-growing minority population in PG. It's not only Canadians or domestic applicants. So these are the statistics that we have for Southeast Asian, around 210. Um, it looks low, but take note, this is 2006. So as of now, based on our data, it has grown five times. So there's a growing market. For Indonesians, uh, we are still getting the numbers for that one. But um, once I get it, don't worry, I will relay it to Martini. So you can have you know, a comfort zone that you have some uh, fellow countrymen in Prince George. But I assure you, we have current Indonesian students in the market right now for CNC. As far as I know, because I came in like two or three years ago, I only met 10. But of course, I cannot meet everyone. So I'm sure that there's more to that. But I only met 10. So we are hoping to grow that market because there really is a potential for um, Southeast Asians, for Indonesians specifically, to enjoy the benefits of Prince George. Now, here's the main reason why a lot of people are considering Prince George. Um, add to this statistics, just to go back a bit, 60% are students of CNC. Then the remaining 40% are actually residents coming from the major city. Oops. All right. Oh, never mind. So 60, 40% are um, residents coming from the major cities, so from Ontario, Vancouver, and other locations. So why would they transfer to Prince George, right? So this is where really the, the thing happens, right? So they would transfer to Prince George mainly because of low cost. Again, it's understandable that you, you sometimes don't mind investing a lot of money as long as the quality is there. But this is where the strength of CNC and Prince George comes in. The quality is there. Prince George will not be a th the third most invested city in uh, Canada, in uh, British Columbia, if it's if the quality is that bad. But add to that, even though you're not asking, the cost of living is very, very low. So it's already a win-win for you, quality of program and education, and also the, the, the cost of living and the, I would say the financial returns is very, very good. Our salary in British Columbia is the same as Vancouver, but the lower cost of living. That's why we are also known as the third best place to live in British Columbia due to the low price on real estate and regular cost of living. So if one of your goal is eventually to migrate to Canada, this is the best place. Again, going back to my keywords, jumpstart your journey in Canada. So second, this thing is distracting me. There you go. All right. So uh, this slide, meanwhile, shows you the top three industries in Prince George right now. Um, I actually, if, if you're thinking what kinds of job are available, because um, for sure you're asking, um, can you find a job after studying? Yes, we are a public school. So after studying, you're allowed to stay for two or three more years um, just to work. So are there jobs in Prince George? Quick answer to that is yes. Um, again, our location, heart of British Columbia, a lot of people passing by, um, good economic roadmap. So this slide just shows you the top three industries that you are, you're going to be serving should you choose to work in Prince George. Number one be forestry, um, number two healthcare and medical sciences, and lastly tourism. What kinds of specific jobs would be there? Accounting, IT, engineering, health sciences, business, um, human resource, and even tourism. So basically all kinds of jobs are available in Prince George, but this is this again are just the top three industries that you'll be serving. All right, so um, now you're thinking how to go around Prince George. This is only a quick trivia. So to go around Prince George, it's quite easy. All students get free bus passes, not free bus literally. So we're not going to give you a free bus, but free bus passes. This is your actual ID. Uh, you get a gold sticker so you can get around um, Prince George. But to give you a uh, quick tip and trivia, most students of CNC, regardless of where they came from, they don't take the bus within six months to eight months of staying Prince George. They buy their own cars. One of them is from this guy. Um, he's just one of our few students who... Are, who was able to migrate to Canada three or four months ago. So he gets, he gives discounts to any international students. So like last month, oh no, last week, he, he gave this uh, discounted car purchase from our South, South African student. So uh, Zimbabwe, 
is, is that South Africa? But yeah, from Zimbabwe. So she, she got her own car from him discounted. So question is, why would the student buy their own car in Prince George, right? So this shows, again, the emphasis on the low cost of living, plus they earn a lot. So the, the benefits of earning cost versus earning, it really works to the advantage of the applicant. That's a good thing. Plus, you get good, high-quality education, right? In a nutshell, in Prince George, you earn more, you learn more, and you save more. So imagine this. The best investment is to have a leverage of academic success and a balance of comfortable living. So jumpstart your journey in Canada the best way possible. Prince George is a wonderful place to raise a family. Absolutely. Prince George is everything that you'd want in a city. Prince George is home. It's more of a home to me than I've had in the place I grew up in. When I first came out here in 2002, everybody where I worked was like, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? You got somewhere to go? You're coming to my place. I must have had six invitations. Everybody takes care of everyone here, and I find that to be a really an original trait for the places that I've lived in. I haven't found this anywhere else. There is something about Prince George that has always amazed me, and I don't know how these people do it time and time again. And they keep supporting, and so they're constantly supporting the community they live in because they believe in it, too. It's been amazing. You know, like uh, we moved a 16-year-old girl halfway through high school, and it's probably not the easiest thing to do when you're coming from a, you know, a greater metropolitan area into a smaller, a smaller city. But it's been great, and once again, the people and her friends here are as close as the friends she's ever had. I think the biggest thing has been the big sky sunsets and just how much sunshine. You know, any place where you have to wear sunglasses 12 months a year is a great place to live. You know, the biggest advantage or change for me in my business life is the commute time from home to my office. You know, I, I live quite rural by Prince George standards, but ultimately I'm 15 minutes door to door between my home and my office. And that used to be an hour and a half commute. So the reality is, you know, sometimes it's it's you know it's taking care of the property, it's 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 going to my daughter's volleyball games, you know, lots of different things that I would have probably missed had I been in the city. I love the fact that commute times are a lot less than in major cities. The fact that I can leave my house at 8:15 and be at work at 8:22 is is great. So that's that's a great thing and allows me a lot more t a lot more free time to be outside and be active and play hockey or go once golf season comes go golfing and do all sorts of stuff like that and the best part about living in Prince George is lots of outdoor activities this the fact that there's no rain or hardly any rain and I like the snow as well and there is tons of Sun PG has most of the amenities that a major city will have which is great spending most of my life in major cities I like to have the ability to go out for a nice meal every once in a while and go to a mall and get, get all the things that I need. I love Prince George. I never thought I would be what people would call a small town girl, but Prince George is not small, first off. And there's so many activities that you can do that you cannot do in a big city. You cannot drive 20 minutes and go snowboarding. You can't go around the corner and go fishing. So I originally wanted to go to medical school. I applied to multiple places, including Simon Fraser University, University of Toronto, uh, University of Western Ontario. I chose the NBC because it is extremely well known in the science division. Going through your university education, you're not rich, you're not driving a nice sports car, you're not rocking the Gucci bags. So you do consider the price of the school. Prince George is a great opportunity for young adults to start their lives. Prince George is an amazing place uh, to raise a family, an amazing place to, to visit, and certainly to work. Prince George is active. Prince George is home. So Prince George is home. Now, how do you start? This is the specifics now to our school, CNC. We are a public school. We've been in PG for 50 years now. So given a public school, um, we do have PGWP or the Postgraduate Work Permit. Our uh, programs are mostly diploma or vocational programs. Um, it starts with certificates. Then the highest we have will be post-diploma programs. I'm sure you're excited to hear about that. And uh, I'll, I'll expound on that a little bit more. And our education is definitely high quality. Given we've been here for 50 years now, our programs, should you choose to study, are always accredited by top high-ranking universities in Canada. Okay, I'll show that later as well. So our seats are uh, limited. 
Um, we don't have a specific target yet for the Indonesian market. So hopefully once we, once we start working on it, um, we can start growing it. Um, but for Filipinos, we only accepted 75 applicants for 2022. For Vietnamese, we only accepted, I believe, 60 students. So it's very limited. And that's very, very good because you don't have much competition. Once you graduate, you take all the opportunities for you, then uh, grab it, just grow for it, and eventually migrate or find work in the future, right? Tuition fee, affordable by up to 40%, and as low as 9,000 Canadian dollars per year. We do charge an application fee of 125 Canadian dollars, and we do require IELTS. But if ever you're having a hard time with IELTS, you can enroll in our English language courses, right, for at least one semester additional. Tuition deposit is very, very much flexible. You can pay either six five or ten thousand Canadian dollars. There is the equivalency here for your reference. This is regardless of the course, okay? Because of course we have tons of uh, programs to offer. Then payment terms it will be either per semester or per year, depending on how much you want to pay. All right, our process. Um, I'll just have to skip this one because I know Martini has her, has her own process. Um, uh, I'm just going to endorse this to her. So if you want to know more, just talk to her. Ask what, what, are, what's, uh, what are the things that are needed. So, um, yep, just uh, inquire with her directly. But just to give you an idea on our timeline, all right, um, once you submit the documents to Martini, then we finalize your course. Um, you'll be submitting the documents to us in a specific timing. For example, the next intake opening will be September next year. Then we will be opening our online portal around February next year as well. So the timeline is quite tight. That's why you need to have your documents ready as early as now, preferably before the Christmas break. So by January, we're only checking it and improving on the documents. Then we start applying for February. You get the letter of offer, or this is the conditional letter of acceptance. Depends on how you call it. Um, you can receive this for about, okay, you can uh, get this for about two weeks up to one month maximum, okay? Um, you're thinking, why is it so long? We are a limited seating school, so we really dissect and check your documents properly, okay? And uh, again, uh, the opportunities are endless in our, uni or in our institution, in our province. So just to make sure that you get the opportunities properly. Then you pay the tuition deposit, then release of letter of acceptance, then you apply for the visa. So that's how it goes, right? Okay. Um, to give you an idea, I'll, I'll have to double check on this one, but I believe this is our first promo for Indonesia. So if you choose to study at CNC, or the insurance for the first three months will be free. All right. Um, I'm not sure of the coverage, but I think this still works for September, but we are only giving this to maybe first the three students, right? So First three students, uh, guard me would be free for the first three months. So once you arrive, you're automatically insured. So uh, check this out, right? And these are the other fees, okay? This should be Canadian dollars. So sorry, I, I'll just have to convert some slides here. Anyway, courses and programs, all right. Um, if ever you'll be checking our website, you may get confused, like all courses there are not offered for international students. So to get to know the whole list of the programs, get uh, in contact with Martini because the website is also addressing the domestic applicants. So the courses and the fees for the, the international students will be much different. Of course, it's a bit more expensive, okay? Because you might see there 7,000 per year. Th that's for domestic applicants, right? So, but still our courses are very, very, affordable, trust me. So here are the programs that you can check out. We have programs under business and management, um, programs under accounting, business management diploma with five specializations and our top two best sellers for Southeast Asia as of the moment, post diploma in human resource and post diploma in tourism and hotel management. Um, so this in this slide, you can see the three post diploma programs we have, accounting post baccalaureate, post-diploma in human resource management and post-diploma in tourism and hotels. So this last two, they move so fast. Like when, once we open the portal, maybe in two or three days, the slots are, full, are filled out. Okay, so you need to apply immediately. 
Then we have the program for dental sciences in human services. As of now, all of these are offered except for healthcare assistance certificate. So um, I think I showed in uh, my previous slide before, CNC or Prince George has also been known as a health hub for people in British Columbia because of its central location. So people from BC, they go to Prince George just to get um, checked medically speaking. So these are very, very high quality programs. Healthcare is not offered to international because the governing body from British Columbia has taken all our seats because they know the quality of our program and offered it mainly to domestic students, all right? Then this is our other post-diploma program, the post-diploma in IT, all right? So um, we also have computer certificate, trades program, very, very good program. They pay so high. So if you finish your program, that would be nice. And these are some of our university credit courses and programs. So if you wish to earn two diplomas in one, this is the pathway in some of the programs that you can take. So after two years, this is what's going to happen. You do the university transfer. Why would you do the university transfer? Why can't you just go direct to the university program that you wish? Well, number one, you, you, do, you, earn, uh, you save more. Number two, you get two diplomas from two top known institutions in Canada. So that's very, very good. You have more leverage. And um, additional reason is that if you have two universities, um, sorry, two education institutions, one college, one university, you get more um, linkages, you get more contacts once you graduate, right? So it's a much better investment. So again, after studying at CNC, which school can you go, for, go to? This is, these are our top university partners. UNBC, to give an idea, guys, it's the top I think it's top one or top two small university in Canada. All right, there's this category if it's large or small university, but I don't know how you look at it, but for me, it's not really small. So UNBC top two or top one, you can just Google that one. And here are our other top partners. So definitely, definitely um, good quality programs and high ranking universities in Canada, right? Facilities, just to give you a quick idea, I can see a lot of questions coming in. I love it. All right, so services available at CNC. Um, here you go. We have everything that you need. So despite us being a college, we have all the university amenities, trust me. But we don't have this slide. This is so cute, by the way. But I'll, I'll show you later. Um, I, I can point you to my YouTube account. I have a compilation there that also shows the, a virtual tour of what CNC is all about. All right, so this is my YouTube account. I, I'm hoping I'm earning money from this. So from nine subscribers, I now have 47. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just have a compilation there for anything about CNC and Prince George, including the virtual tour. How much does it cost to stay in Prince George? Very affordable. That's, that's really the gist of Prince George. It's really high quality and affordability. That's the thing, right? So um, it's really giving you the best managed risk possible, right? Um, home stays um, at most 800 Canadian dollars per month. We do have our support team that processes accommodation um, at CNC. Add to that, we have a growing number of foreign student communities that we have a chat group for Filipinos, Vietnamese, um, Koreans as well. So you can we can just ask them for support if they know some accommodations, then we can recommend it to you guys, right? Off campus. Starts at 350 up to 500 Canadian dollars. Our on campus is usually for single student applicants. So um, if you wish to apply for this one, do let us know, but it's always full, to be honest. So off campus is usually the safest. You don't have to worry how far it is from, from the campus, CNC to anywhere in Prince George. Prince George is also known as the 15 minute city. So anywhere from school or within the city, 15 minutes, there's no traffic, unless you're jogging, right? Of course. Okay, this is our on-campus accommodation, off-campus, homestay. Quick comparative analysis, just a run-through how really affordable we are, but the qualities are very, very good. So it's rare that you're, you can find a school like ours, that's for sure, okay? So uh, emphasis on Vancouver versus Prince George. Here's the thing. Once you graduate, if you wish to relocate in a bigger institution or bigger city, it's okay. That's why we're, we're, what we're talking about CNC is that we're very, very good in terms of best jumpstart 
for you to start your journey. It's really the safe way to start your journey. All right, this are just the minimum wages in Canada. So British Columbia is the second to the highest minimum wage after none of it. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So second to the highest, but cost of living again, very low. I, I'm getting tired of myself saying cost of living. All right, <laughs> jobs in uh, British Columbia, very, very good. And given PG is the third most invested city, we have tons of, of, of uh, opportunities as well. I mentioned a while ago, Hyatt Hotel just built their establishment last year during the pandemic, so brave. And in terms of student services, of course, um, we have everything that you need. The most important thing here is we do have a student union. Um, they protect your rights from transition to student visa and transition to your PGWP and even finding opportunities, accommodation, anything for you, they protect your rights. And of course, um, I'm still out of stock. Okay, that, that is how fast our seats are moving. But this is it. Um, I'm going to print one. Hopefully, I can personalize something for the Indonesian market. This is, anyway, um, I, I also use this for Vietnam and also the Philippines. So hopefully, I can send a few stocks there. i give one to Martini. This is uh, going to be good for her while sleeping. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give this. Once you get accepted, this is really to make you feel part of the family. This is the good thing about CNC. We really connect not only as a client, you know, we are all about having fun. Studying abroad is easy, you know, part of the family. That's the thing. So anyway, I'm almost done, okay? Whatever your reason of studying in Canada, we have a case to say. Location, quality of education, all right? Cost of living. This, this is good. I, I know you guys want this quality of education. 50 years existing pathway program to high-ranking institutions. So you get more flexibility and more advantages and benefits okay even we're, we're affordable we're not really really cheap quality wise okay so we we don't uh, compromise that part cost of living okay you know you know you have lots of reason why you want to go to study in canada but we have all the the points to mention as well so in a nutshell not only we're, we are the best jump start uh jump start or jump off point for your journey in canada but it's really worth the penny. It's a win-win should you choose to study in our institution and our province. All right, and this is our international team. And uh, thank you. I'm open to accept any questions right now. Wow, thank you very much, Jilo. That is really awesome presentation. And I <laughs> thank guess, you. I guess a lot of questions are waiting here. They're so excited to to ask the questions to you. Okay. I hope to see you guys um, in Prince George soon, okay? Okay, okay. Since here there are two persons who raise your hands, uh, I'm gonna choose one first and later we go to the text, uh, I mean, to the notes. Um, first is from Omprah. Okay, Omprah, you can just unmute yourself and then just ask questions to, to Jello. Go ahead. Okay, if he still takes time to question, then I'll go to Citra Ruli. Go ahead. Hi. Thank you, Martini. Hello. Okay, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. hello. Uh, it's so tempting, yeah, because you <laughs> say that uh, high salary with low right. living cost. Okay, I want to ask two questions. Sure, well, sure, go ahead. Okay, I want to know uh, 
are there many Metro students in CMC? And Sorry, ma many mature, mature students. Mature CMC. students. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And second, uh, what is the most degree of extreme? What is the most extreme degree of weather in Prince George? Ah, okay. Good question. Okay. Um, let's answer the first one in terms of uh, mature students. Um, how young are you, Sitra? But don't answer that. Anyway, um, the oldest student I have is actually 52. Um, this is the good thing about Canada. There's no age discrimination. Yeah. It's all about preparing the documents. And in terms of numbers of mature students, I would say 5% of the population of the international students are mature, to be honest. So uh, you, you won't have any problems. Plus, everyone's so accommodating. Then in terms of weather... The most extreme, um, how do I safely describe it? It's not as extreme as Vancouver, to be honest. They don't really wear like two-piece clothes. I, I forgot the exact temperature, but maybe negative five, I think. So because as you can see, Prince George is at the heart of British Columbia. So it's not as cold. It needs, it needs to go through mountains first. So the weather is just perfect. So um, that, that's why it's really perfect for Southeast Asian. You know, um, nationalities from tropical destinations, it's much easier to adjust that way. So it's not as extreme as uh, Alberta, yeah? Definitely not. <laughs> yeah, I, I know Alberta is quite cold. Very, very cold. <laughs> Like you cannot cook rice in Alberta. So don't worry. Prince George, very much perfect. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I like the okay. comments here. Okay, then let's read any comments here. First is, uh, what is the difference between post-diploma and post-graduate diploma? And maybe I could add one more. Uh, sure. post Okay. What is the difference? Yeah. Because some of the students asked me about that. Okay, no problem. So um, let me see if I, I can get this through correctly. Uh, you, you know, there's bachelor's degree, right? So four years. After bachelor's, technically, technically you can go for master's. So post-baccalaureate is in between bachelor's and master's degree, right? Then post-diploma and post-graduate diploma is actually almost the same. Post-diploma is equivalent to third and fourth year co college. Third and fourth year college. Now you're thinking, is it a downgrade for you? Well, it depends on your mindset. To be honest with you, it's not a downgrade because you'll be comparing um, diploma from Canada versus Indonesia. Same goes if it's Vietnam or Philippines. So Southeast Asia versus Canada, the quality of diploma is way different. So it's not a downgrade. It's actually a complementing diploma that improves your status. So post-diploma are usually taken because it improves their chances more, um, even if they have graduated. Because the requirement for a Southeast Asian student to um, take a post-diploma, they are required to have finished four-year college, four years college. So it's really an advance. Uh, a progression if you'll be taking those programs. Um, Post-baccalaureate, post you can also apply for that one, but usually it's much harder to pass because what CNC does is they check what school you graduated from and see if that school levels to the quality of Canada. You got the point? So it, again, it's progressive, so don't, don't think it's really a downgrade. So yes, high school transcript enough? Uh, no. For high school, sorry, high school in Indonesia is grade 12, right? Yeah, grade 12. Ah, no. Um, for grade 12, you need to start with diploma program first. Post-diploma, again, you, you need to have finished at least four-year college. Okay, thank you then. Then next, sure. we go to the next questions. Is there any co-op programs in this college? And maybe if yes, what kind of program is that? Um, sadly, no. We, we don't offer co-op programs, but some of our courses do have internships. Um, question is, are they paid and not? Um, because again, the affordability of the school is more than enough for the student, mostly if the goal is to earn income. So um, no co-op for us. Uh, if there is no co-op, then um, I mean, yeah, as you showed us earlier that mm. the university has some partnership with, you know, like uh, any company or any, you know, like some helping to students, yeah. for example, to like student carrier or like that? Is that exactly? Any? 
Yeah, um, the student union is the one who handles that. And um, I guess I'd like to add on the good thing about Prince George is that, you know, everyone can work for 20 hours per week, right, off campus. Um, add to that, you can work on campus on top of the 20 hours per week. So you earn double the price. So that's a good thing. Wow, that's good then. Yeah. <laughs> So, so it means that uh, does it mean that uh, yeah we can work on campus twenty uh, hours per week and after that we can still have another additional correct, part time work outside of yeah. campus. Wow, that's why that's you crazy. can buy your own car in Prince George. That's the reason why. <laughs> so, so that is so tempting, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> okay. Next, then we go to the next questions. Uh, business course at CNC, of course, yes, yeah. Yes, we do have business diploma with five specializations, yes. Okay, and is there any scholarship interested in human resources? Our scholarship, uh, again, um, the thing is CNC is within the top 10 most affordable school in Canada, not only British Columbia, but in Canada. So we don't have scholarships from applying right now, but once you get to Canada, there are scholarships depending on your grades. So it can still go lower, but uh, what I can do is I can, number one, I gave you the promo for the insurance for the application fee i will check i think there is an ongoing promo for discounted or free application fee especially for indonesia i'm sure cnc will be more generous so here's the deal if you apply today's the 26th when's the 30th tuesday next week okay here's the thing uh list m if you apply before end of the month confirm your application with martini i will find a way to give you the discounted application fee I'll waive that 125 Canadian dollars, even with my salary, it's fine. So wow. to everyone, no problem. I, I will really find a way. I will really find a way. But of course, you need to confirm your application with Martini, okay? Okay, then. Okay, then we go to the next question. Is there any Duolingo? Yes. Uh, Sensi right. accept Duolingo with score 105, right? Correct, correct, yes. Okay, and then the next, how much the average room rent already answered? Uh, yes. from the presentation and then next post diploma how long i guess it's two years oh, right correct most of our courses are two years so that's you get a three-year pgwp okay and also the pathway programs to those uni i mean are uh, are there some yeah any programs for the pathways or all of the programs can be a pathway from uh, not university. not all um there's this uh, one part of the slide mostly associate programs kinesiology so um once you get there for example if you apply for a business diploma um you can get an academic advising and tell them that you intend to do a pathway program they can just mix your subjects that you'll be taking so whatever program you're applying for we can find a way to create a pathway to a bigger university that that would be easy to adjust oh wow that's so great then and yes. then um, oh yeah awesome salary with low cost of living and also still get bonus <laughs> everybody got <laughs> excited with that <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, and then what is the lowest temperature in there? Uh, you already mentioned, right? Yeah, so, BC, sorry, I, I don't have the exact, yeah. In in BC, uh, I guess that's not too cold. It's not too cold, <laughs> yep, yep, correct. Yeah. It's better for the, South, the tropical countries, much better. Okay. okay, then the next question. Until what time the public bus operate? Oh, I think, I think 12 midnight. I'll have to double check. Because it's not really a problem because most people there have their cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just you, you can afford any cars, and that's so easy. Yeah. <laughs> correct, correct. And then, how about opportunity after finish human resource? I mean, maybe, maybe this is asking about and um, job of availability. Yeah, T tons of jobs. Um, human resource is actually one of the fastest. A moving course that we have so there are tons of jobs there um you know hiring for businesses uh, factories companies um supervisor positions as, as i mentioned a while ago um prince george is the third most invested city so more and more companies are investing there so the more people 
investing, uh, meaning the more people are getting hired. So there are still definitely opportunities for human resource. Okay, that's great. And after that, the question is, why medical sonographer program not available for international students? I guess yeah, it's I, for, for healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I, I get this question from any part of the world. So I, I, <laughs> I, I've discussed this with CNC, I actually discussed med sonographer um, on another, I think two more courses, I forgot the other name. I discussed it with CNC November last year. And uh, I think they're trying to open it. But since we are a public school, it's hard to just open a course without going through any government discussion. So as you know, when you do the government thing, it takes a long time. So hopefully someday, but as of now, it's just really not open. That, that's just how it goes. Eventually, we can just show them the demand and uh, we'll see. Because, yeah, it, it deals with government, right? <laughs> correct, correct. That's the hard part. But definitely, don't worry. I'm listening to everyone. Most people all over the world are asking for this program. We'll see. Okay. Uh, can I apply CNC without report book of high school, only with graduation certificate or high school and bachelor degree? Yeah, that's, that's right. You do not need report, right, from high school. What, just need What's the report book exactly? Is it like a uh, transcript? Yeah, it's like a transcript from grade 10 until grade 12. Ah, uh, well, to be honest, I think we might need that. Um, Are you sure? Wait, we, wait, we, have, we, have, we have like the total transcript for, I mean, like a vinyl exam for that. And usually ah. students will, will submit that one, not, okay. not grade from grade 10 until 12, I guess. Okay, Th thank you for educating me on that one. The, the most important <laughs> thing is we, we need to see the grades of the high school and the college. So I, I don't know what document that should be shown. So if it, there's a summary, that should, that should be fine. Okay, there is a summary then. And any good. condition for work in campus? No, as long as you pass the interview, you're good. <laughs> oh, that's great then. Yep. And then... And then... Salamat Pokuya, friends of person and <laughs> promos. Hey. Oh, that is from Ray. <laughs> Ray is Rina's husband. So oh, he is okay. my partner too. He is in Sudbury too right now. He's working. Hello, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kuya. Kumusta ka? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the next, we go to the next. Oh, Pauline Miranti, she's raising her hands. Okay, go ahead, Pauline, if you want to ask directly. For Hi. Uh, thank you, Marty. Hi, Angelo. Yeah. Hello, hello. Okay, so the questions are, uh, actually, it's quite a bit uh, same like uh, Chitra asked, but mm -hmm. what if uh, I graduated from high school in 2006? And the problem is I lost my report card uh, or transcript. And, and I went to my high school and mm -hmm. it was closed permanently. So mm. I went to the education authorities and they, give the, uh, they gave me a letter that... Uh, uh, it said oh, that, uh, yeah, for the clothes and the transcript is lost. So I mm -hmm. just have, have the summary letter for all the, um, what you say, the graduate score and also yeah. the high school certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all, and I, I actually already uh, translated to English by the sword okay. translator. Mm -hmm. And I did the Duolingo. So my intention Ooh. is to uh, enter the social service worker Ooh. diploma mm. for uh, May uh, 2022. So okay. yes, regarding that, the comment, uh, the transcript that I lost. So mm. uh, it's gonna be a, a problem or something. Um, no, that's a good question. Um, we will not, re if, if it's really close and you have a proof that it closed, it's okay. We can accept that. Um, I can discuss that to the Canadian admissions team. Now, with regards to your course pre preference, social service worker, right? So yes. 
it's only open every September. So um, the application will open for February next year, but you need to get to be ready for the documents. Um, wait, let me quickly share my screen. Uh, social service has a special requirement. Can you see it now? Yeah, actually I have researched and uh, uh, browsed you on this? your website. So I prepared from my, what you call my volunteer supervisor. Like uh, good, good, good. Uh, letter uh, and uh, that three requirements, right? Okay. The rate good, good. So actually I prepared that I, nice. I, I wonder I can answer to that program in May, intersection. Um, uh, yeah, but, we did, you did okay. your research. That's nice. Martini, sign her up. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to Prince George in 2016. I have oh. relativity. Mm. I went to Pine Mall, right? Several times. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I went to CNC as well when I was there. So I want to, I, I have intention to go to school at uh, CNC uh, actually so I do research and I joined the uh, Martini's um, group agency so yeah that's good that's good well I, I'm happy and hopefully I can see you there once I can also travel immediately so yep um, at least you know everything but that's the thing I can check if you really want to go enter me if there's a pathway program but um, of course, if you're going to be coming in May, it's not going to be a direct program. Meaning from May before the actual program on September, you're going to be studying general subjects first. So like biology, whatever the requirement is, if you really want to go for May, because the regular intake for social service would be really September. So it's up to you. It depends on your patients, but we, we can definitely work, work it out. Okay, so uh, for the confirmation of the documents needed so yeah i would get in touch with martini right yes please yes please okay yeah. then thank you very much you're welcome see you soon see you okay. soon that's good then okay next um we have we have how about fee and length of hospitality management program oh okay. it's already mentioned right yeah um uh, but for hospitality management uh wait length is two years to uh post diploma in tourism is uh where is it nineteen thousand four hundred seventeen for two years already so it's around nine thousand per year it's our that's cheapest program really affordable that's really affordable. <laughs> <laughs> okay then next question will be i graduated from high school in 2002 can I still register in CNC and can I take the healthcare assistant route? Um, yes, you can still register, no age limit. But sadly, second question, healthcare assistant is again one of those programs that has been pulled out by the governing body in Canada because they want to prioritize the domestic students first because of the pandemic. So I'm not sure when healthcare assistant will open, but just in case you can always check our other health programs like um, social service worker, early childhood, uh, practical nursing, or even associate in science. Maybe you can check that out. So better just get assessed first. So Martini can give you other options as well. Sure. And then the next, mm. Mm. sir, it takes three years or two to earn uh, PGWP. Okay, I will I will explain this. Sure. If you study in Canada for two years, then you will get three years PGWP. Okay. And and next, is there any semester break after studying two semesters, and can we work full time during the break? Yes, there is. So um, imagine this as uh like, like in indonesia so you're studying for two semesters same timing same time same uh, months then you can yes you can work full-time during summer breaks or even vacation breaks okay but it's not that's not a big deal because if it's a, you know not yet uh, a break time you can still mm. just like what you said work on campus 20 hours per week and then off campus you still have chance to work right Correct, correct. And then, and then next, this is from Nico. He wants to go to Prince George too, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I know this guy. Okay. <laughs> so, some of the programs demand biology and math requirements. What if we are graduated from social? I mean, 
IPS is social here, uh, hmm. social studies, which have no ah. biology nor math uh, in the report book. Any solution? I mean, <laughs> you have, I mean, you'll have uh, to take it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you cannot. You cannot. Uh, I mean, uh, is is it allow? Is it allow well, it? No. Um, depends on the app, the program you're applying for. If it's really required, um, of course. Once you get accepted, there's this academic advising team, so they can provide you prerequisite programs. So um, it's understandable. That's why you took other programs to avoid biology and math. For me, I'm a tourism student. I, I, I tried avoiding math, but I don't know. They still gave it to me. I hate it. So uh, you can still take other options, but I cannot guarantee that you can avoid it because, again, it's the difference of the quality of program in Canada versus other countries. So you can check with academic advising what options you can get and depending on the course you're taking. For business, I think, I think you, it's possible that you can avoid that. But for health sciences, definitely you have to take those programs. So, yeah. Okay, then next. What if I have biology and math grade for health major hmm. transcript from university? Is it acceptable? No. Um, again, it's the quality versus Canada and Indonesia. So even if you took the program already, they will require you to take it if it's part of the curriculum. So that, that's the sad reality. But don't worry, it's a good experience. <laughs> but trust me, here's the thing. Most of the, the, the students, because I've been doing this since 2012, what I realized is that it's much easier for students to study abroad, especially in Canada. I, I guess it's the training that they do. So just don't be afraid. Once you get there, gonna be easy peasy if it's not easy for you you can search for me and punch me in the face free <laughs> one punch no problem <laughs> so what's the solution for nico then you have to take it <laughs> that's the reality nico um don't be afraid um i understand where you're coming from but um depends on what program you're up you're applying but i can assure you even if you check other schools um it will be the same. They may still require you to take biology or even math. That's just how it goes in Canada. What did he say? In Bahasa? <laughs> this Bahasa, right? <laughs> he, he, said, he said that the, the main point is to, you know, like to overcome his problem about report, about the school ah. transcript in, in Indonesia. He, okay, he wants okay. to deal with it first. <laughs> no problem, no problem. But uh, no, no issues. Um, but you really, you, I think you'll just have to take it if ever. That's the worst case scenario. Okay. Is there any more questions, Chitra? Uh, you're still raising your hand. You want to ask more? Or maybe you'll forget. <laughs> oh, there you go. She forgot. Uh, Om. Okay. Om, you're there now, Om? Is allowed to, if I switch the program before start academic? Not advisable. Um, whatever program is accepted or issued by the embassy, you need to take it at least for one semester. Then if you mm -hmm. want to switch, you can switch after one semester. Okay. And and if I'm not mistaken, you said that sure. uh, if students, uh, you know, like having discount for car purchase, is it True. from the university? No, <laughs> oh, it, wow. it's just it, it's just really from the uh, community. They're really embracing the international students there. That's a thing. So oh, from the community the, of the college, community of international students. Oh, I see. So it, it's it's not exclusive for Vietnamese, Filipinos, um, Koreans, or even Africans. So any international students, um, I can connect you to you know Woodwit and Super Center. They can give you discounts if you purchase a college. Wow. So. And how yes. much is the discount? Very cheap, for sure. <laughs> I, I, I can't give the exact amount because it depends on the car you're going to be purchasing. But um, as far as I know how, how I compute the cars here in my place, so it's still very, very affordable. Wow, that's great, Dan. Yes. And, and Okay, and then about the... You, you said about the homestay. Is it dormitory? Hmm. Um, some homestays, yes. Um, for most, it's like, uh, what they call this, a shared, it's not a dorm type, it's more of a shared house than one room. It, it's like a hybrid dorm type and uh, 
housing thing. So shared house, then some rooms, they have like three bunk beds there. So it, it depends on the price of the, that you're paying. I, I don't really advise homestays, to be honest with you. Maybe it's just me. And I, I find it much more affordable. I think you can find more cheaper accommodations then. Okay, and then next. Um, oh, so so there is community from school yeah, for international students. Okay, and the next question, is there any picture of the student residence at the college? So um, you can just check out my YouTube account. Um, I think I posted it a while ago. I'll, I'll type the link here. So you can just uh, check out a virtual tour of CNC. You can see the pictures of the accommodations there. Everything's it's complete. Okay, just don't forget to subscribe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here, I uh, help you to get the gain more subscriber. You know that. <laughs> no, I, I'm not like you. I just saw your TikTok. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm following okay. you now. So, yeah. Okay, that's, Th that's my YouTube account. I just have a compilation for anything Prince George and anything CNC. So, you have, you have a more idea on, on how it looks like, how it goes. So, okay. And about a lecture cost international business management i can i can give you the tuition fee for yeah. that adidimas <laughs> and there's question from ferry for working out of campus is it networking for me too no it's included in the yeah. you know in Correct. your study permit it's already attached with that it's automatic yep yeah automatic yeah so let me repeat once more for you guys who maybe um you know you are late uh, in listening to jello's explanation about the pardon work you can work on campus 20 hours per week and you can still you can still have any chance to work off campus so you can work more than 20 hours per week then okay yep exactly and the uh, low cost of living for sure exactly and you still get any discount for purchasing cars <laughs> exactly and i'll be helping you out the most fun school representative you'll ever meet trust me i'm as crazy <laughs> as they come yeah the most fun <laughs> and the most helpful i guess you're I, so I nice. hope so <laughs> <laughs> i don't have money martini you're being you're trying to flatter me too much <laughs> oh my god, I know it's your money. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, okay. And then next, um, mm. what are high demand jobs, both part time and full time for post in PG? PG. Mm. High demand jobs. It's it's very much subjective. The thing is, we, we have all kinds of opportunities in Prince George in PG. So um high demand right now, definitely. In terms of industry would be there's medical um social work so anything related to health sciences there's a high demand but of course it will still depend on the the background of the the spouse or the owp is going to be joining the student so it's subjective to to answer that one but uh, there are definitely tons of jobs i can assure you so you won't have a hard time finding one okay and maybe you can explain how far is it uh, I mean, Prince George, mm -hmm. uh, many, many, many students ask me, oh my God, Prince George, where is it? And then they found in the map, <laughs> it's, so, it's so tiny, it's so small, and then, but it actually, it has uh, everything you need there. But uh, maybe the nearest town or the nearest city from Prince George, maybe you can, you can tell them. Ah, uh, how... nearest city? <laughs> well, technically, Prince George is like a, it's not really a major city like Vancouver. I forgot the name, but there's another city like one hour away. I think they, they describe it as, as uh, more urban. But yeah, Prince George itself is all almost major already. But if we're going to be, for example, Vancouver, it's an eight hour drive. So if you want to go to Vancouver, you can just go there every weekend, just enjoy it waste your money because it's an expensive place then um yeah. that's uh, so close yeah. then that's it's so still close, close. eight hours away it's like traffic yeah. in jakarta right eight hours yeah 
This is yeah. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely yes. Definitely yes. <laughs> yeah. So eight hours away from Vancouver, major city nearby, one hour another. I forgot the name of the city, but Prince George itself, you have I played the video a while ago. It has the amenities of an urban city, so you don't need to go that far. Okay, next question. Do you normally take the bus or train or plane to go from Vancouver to PT? If you have money, go take the plane. It's one hour away by plane from Vancouver to PG. Um, if not, you can take a car or rent a car from uh, by driving eight hours. But usually it's for by plane, one hour away only. All right. Is there still any questions? Maybe raise your hand or maybe drop any questions in the chat box. Correct. Uh, what is this? Yeah. Because if there's no more questions, we will end up this session. And maybe there is some words from you. Oh, okay. There is some. Uh, there is one more question from Nico. In the entry requirements for a practical nurse, it is said that the grade requirements must be completed within five years. What about us as a major students? Oh, the no. No, not really, because uh, I have a lot of uh, practical nursing student that um, what they call this mature. So I have yeah. to check. Can, can you like maybe I know just double check it with Martini if uh, the information you have from because the thing with our website is that sometimes it shows about domestic applicants, so you might have confused that. So you can have Martini check it or uh, just send me something to to confirm that one. Yeah, some student asked me uh, yeah. in the website there are no there are no international students programs. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should update it. <laughs> they they should fix it much easier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay then. Um, is there any special words from you, Jello, to the um, people here? Maybe who wanna um, study not, there? Not really. Yeah, I'm just happy to be honest to really part to participate with your event, Martini. And um, I had fun. Um, I'm just I'd like to say congratulations. Oh, Hardy, you're on space. <laughs> yeah. Can you breathe? <laughs> Hardy, do you Hardy, do you want to ask question? <laughs> to Jella? Okay, no? okay. No Is it clear enough for you? <gasps> yeah. I I, th I, th I thought the, the cat distracted me. Then I saw Hardy in space. Now that distracted me more. It's an ice cream But yeah, anyway, congratulations to everyone. This is actually your first step to study in Canada. So um, my only advice is, first and foremost, I don't know if it's a, a thing here, but in the Philippines, social media is a thing and there are tons of um, false information spreading on social media. So hopefully the best way for you to get the right information is to, is to work with a legitimate accredited partner and that is Martini. So just ask her anything, sign up, um, get processed, then apply immediately because that's the next best step for you to start your plans. If you don't start your plans, it's just going to remain a dream. So unless you take action, that's the only time I will see you in Canada. That's for sure. Okay, we're going to be flying together. So I'm, I'm just happy to have met everyone. And I'm hoping uh, we can get more Indonesians to study in Prince George. We're going to have a blast, going to have fun. Um, studying in Canada should be easy and definitely with Martini, that's going to happen. So um, I'm just happy. Congratulations, everyone, on your first step and happy weekend. Okay. Thank you so much, Jilo, and thank you very much for all the participants. And if you have any questions or if you want to know more or know further about the CMC or the programs and also the tuition fee, don't forget to contact me. And mm -hmm. thank you for Rina and also Ray who helped me so much with the recording and also the time. Thank you very much. And special thanks for Jilo. It's already late. It's already late there. <laughs> no, nope, so I'm much. only one hour ahead. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> okay, Good night, bye -bye. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye then. See you, Jello.